So I had a very simple project in mind. I was going to switch out my Polini throttle on the Maverick Atom 80 to the Viterazzi throttle that I'd used before and really liked. So what could be easier, right? Oh boy. So I won't keep you in incredible suspense, and yes, I did get that new throttle on, but instead of going from a straight line from A to B, I went from A, took all sorts of up and down around the course, hill and dale, and finally arrived at B. So I'll tell you how it all happened. So when I unpackaged the Viterazzi throttle, I noticed that, well, everything's the same except just one ground wire. Oh, that's interesting. From the Politi throttle, there's two wires coming out of the cable. One's the ground, obviously. Well, what's the other one for? So I had to find out a little bit more. So after going on a couple of Facebook groups, I found out that the Blue wire is the ground wire. You can see here attached to the coil. And the other one where the screwdriver is pointed to is a spark arrestor. So the Viterazzi only has one ground and it has a built-in spark arrestor, which is why it only has the one cable coming out. So, okay, problem solved, uh, no big deal. Now I'll just have to pretty much get rid of that other cable. Just disconnect the one that's a spark arrestor on the Polini and just attach that single ground wire to the ignition coil. There's a couple of places where you can connect that ground from the Viterazzi throttle and lead it to the ignition coil. There's some bullet connectors here. You just basically get rid of the one that has the uh, spark arrestor and the red one is the ground. So you just uh, splice in a connector and you could uh, connect it there and that will lead to the ignition coil. Or I thought, why not just go directly to the ignition coil with all these connectors that potentially could fail? Well, there was a problem there that I didn't foresee. So the blue line is the ground. It's a simple female to male connector. Uh, the male connector stud is on the ignition coil. I'll just disconnect that, splice in a new female connector, and I'll be good to go. And this is where it all gets kind of interesting. So I start to pull that out and it's a little snug. And next thing I know, I have this. So after being in shock for about one or two seconds, I finally realized what I had done. And I said, how did that not come off? Okay, so I started to look at things a little more closely and I realized that that female and male connectors are soldered together. So that was never gonna come off unless I loosened the solder or I just did a, another connection elsewhere, which is what I had thought of doing until I thought, no, I want a straight line connection. So what do I do now? <laughs> so again, remember that I did get back in the air. This was a beautiful flight I had after I finally got that throttle on. Obviously the ignition coil is working again. And okay, well, nice flight. Let's get back to how I solved this problem. Eventually I just decided along with some feedback from uh, people with more experience than me that we're just gonna put a new ignition coil in. I was able to get a new coil right away from Sky Sports USA. Uh, been a great, great retailer to work with. Chris went out of his way to kind of give me some information, but the engine has to come off the frame. So the first thing I did was loosen that harness straps at the top so I could pull that harness forward to get to the harness mount bolts attaching the engine to the frame. I did remove the propeller, but I did not have to remove the muffler. So here's the engine off with the rubber mounts showing and there's the manual start mechanism. The next step is to remove the rubber mounts bolts that are attaching that manual start cover off of the flywheel 
covering that you see here. And there's four bolts that you remove for the flywheel cover. And once you have that off, you'd be able to see the flywheel and the ignition coil, which is what we have here. Now there is an air gap measurement that you see the spacing between the ignition coil and the flywheel that you have to take note of. So before you loosen those bolts, really measure that distance, what they call the air gap. There is no published specs that I could find, but Parajet USA came up with a novel approach, which is basically, well, it's about the size of a heavy stock business card. And that's actually right what it was on the right side. On the left side, it was actually a little bit more. It was a heavy stock business card and a piece of printer paper. I probably measured this about 50 times before I was really comfortable with the measurement. After replacing the ignition coil, making sure the air gap measurement was correct, I just reversed the whole procedure and I had that single ground now going into ignition coil with that male and female connector. And no, I did not solder it back on this time. When you attach the throttle, just remember to keep a little bit of slack so that when you push on the throttle, you don't get an immediate response. This is just because as you move that throttle around, you're gonna get some movement of the, the cable, even without depressing the throttle. So just keep a little slack and you won't get that variance in RPM just by moving that cable around. I had flown with the Vitarazzi throttle on a different paramotor, and I really liked the way it felt in my hands. Just really easy to control for me, just much more comfortable. Nothing against the Polini, you may really love it. So it really just comes down to what you really like to use. So it started out as adventurous and paramotive repair. It's not exactly what I was looking forward to, but I did learn a lot. One is you really got to check things out. Little things will sneak up on you, like the soldering of the attachment to the ground. Uh, never heard that from anybody, and all of a sudden afterwards says, "Oh yeah, that happens all the time." <laughs> so I didn't see it when it was soldered on there. Didn't even think about it, uh, but. There it was. So anyway, learn something. The good thing is the Adamini is pretty easy to work on. Just really slow, methodical from what I've done so far. So that was pretty nice. Uh, was able to go through everything, check it out, take off the mounts, put it back on. So it really was an adventure. Anyway, not that I wish that on anybody, but if it does come down to it, uh, maybe this will help you out. Anyway, any questions, any comments, or anything you've learned, let me know. Because, uh, again, there's not a whole lot published on the Atom 80. Uh, Top 80 was incredibly good. But uh, good news is the Atom 80, I think, is getting out there now. And uh, this video should help you. Take care. So what should have been a straightforward exchange of throttles turned into quite the adventure for me. Uh, but here I am flying just a few days later. Beautiful flight from the inland area where we launched to the coast and back. Just a great flight with some of my flying buddies that I usually fly with. But I learned a lot. The good news also is that ignition coil is not that expensive. Uh, pretty straightforward, just took a little bit of my time and I know that much more now. Please leave any of your questions or comments below and I'll try to get to them right away. And I've also had a lot of new subscribers lately, so thanks a lot. I really appreciate that support. I uh, hope you find these enjoyable, helpful, fun. I have a great time doing them. 
Take care. See you next time and fly safely out there. Bye-bye.